so welcome everyone to the four night series on growth. It's not quite true what Andy says, we have lots to teach you. No, we only are here to share and hopefully unlearn and learn from you guys. Uh, Lex and I decided to pair on this talk, unlike maybe most of the other evenings, because we figured there is so much in terms of the breadth and the depth of this topic that one, we wanted to make sure we are doubling down on where we really want to make a point and also align on where there might be redundancies. So that's really the ethos in terms of why we paired together. And of course, we got to know each other in terms of her geeky passion for being a growth designer and my world in terms of leading teams for growth design. So we are hoping today to cover a brief history of what growth is. Alex is going to walk us through that. And then we'll dive into her talk, which is practicing growth design. And then I will take it on into leading uh, design teams that are focusing on growth. So with that, I will let Lex kick it off. So before we get into our work and how we see growth design, we wanted to take us back to a time. A time when the first growth hacker was hatched from its brushed aluminum eggshell on a nest of product market fit. This is my unofficial history of growth, a time less than 10 years ago. We'll start with this guy, Sean Ellis. Who knows him, right? Raise your hand. Oh, wow. OK, cool. This is going to be good then. So Sean Ellis, in 2010, he wrote a post where he encouraged founders to find a growth hacker. And he said that this is a role of someone that's going to find, it's going to take you from product market fit and find sustainable, scalable ways to grow your business. And he framed it as this individual role, right? You just find this person, they will nail it for you, go find a growth hacker. Here's what was happening at that time. Airbnb was just a little baby startup and they did their first air mattress launch where they had people sleep on their living room floor. Uber launches its first cab. It was Uber cab. Any of you who work for Uber know that. Pinterest put up their first pin with something really sad, <laughs> but it took off, right? These companies exploded and everyone wanted to know their secret. How do I make my startup a billion dollar unicorn? We started to see these famous growth hackers emerge. People like Andrew Chen at Uber, Mercy Grace at Slack, Brian Balfour at HubSpot. And they talked about their work. They talked about what they were doing. And they talked a lot about engineering, marketing, and product. And they almost never talked about design. And if they talked about design, they weren't talking about designers. They were talking about designs that, that these roles did. And it just kind of seemed like to the rest of us that a growth hacker would grab some engineers and take a company from zero to 100, boom. Meanwhile, the design team's on the sidelines, maybe making some mocks to send through the channels. <laughs> but it turned out that it, it really doesn't work that way. And there were some designers that were involved in these companies. And more importantly, the companies that have sustainable success with thoughtful product design are including design and other functions like data, customer, so customer care. Um, they're really thinking much more broadly about their work. And we're now seeing companies not only have growth teams, but really employ growth across their whole organization, which Chaitanya is gonna talk about with Netflix, um, because they really embody this as a company. So we, we've seen this evolution again in the last 10 years. So as Andy mentioned, growth design is very nascent because growth is very nascent. You want me to <clears throat> okay. I'll come back to you? So as you can see in a pretty short time, in less than 10 years, today we are at a point where design is a strategic collaborator and partner in the growth uh, process. Uh, at this moment, I just want to do a show of hands. Who all in this room are working in growth team? And the rest of you are wannabes. <laughs> You've got the right audience. Um, so today, product design is a strategic driver of growth. Whether you're a, a Swiss Army knife, single designer in a startup, or you're in a design team that's a growth design team in a large organization. The second thing that Andy called out quite a bit, what's happening is growth roles today are there both for individual contributors, product design roles, Today was the first time I saw senior product designer for retention. So I really need to unpack that. Uh, as well as for leadership, 
uh, which is pretty amazing to know that it's come away, but it's such a discipline. It requires design leaders to lead this particular discipline. And last but not the least, uh, there are more women who are able to lead and design for growth problem solving, a discipline that originally was really heavy lifted by men. Not that we don't love men, we do. We yeah, we're pro men, but also it. pro women. Uh, so a quick snapshot, uh, as you, Lex and I were researching, just to give a quick snapshot, if you look today on LinkedIn and you search for product designers for growth, this is really what the landscape looks like. And on the leadership side, I think the way recruiting happens is it's really more word of mouth, it's really through the networking community. But some of the titles that I'm coming across is design director for growth or design director for expansion. There was a time when my team at Netflix was struggling between being called the membership team or the non-membership team. We finally landed up with growth. <laughs> and this is really something hats off to Lex's passion and hard work. Growth design today is not something that is only ubiquitous to the US. It is something that's becoming a voice around the world. And she's gonna dive into some of the resources she has been championing herself so that it's a global voice in a global community. So the hiring and the need for talent and growth is cross-functional. Product managers, data scientists, designers, qualitative researchers, all of these roles have openings these days. Uh, and with that, we've given you this uh, overview or a very high level brief history. There are amazing books and resources out there if you want to get into more of the details, more of the sort of head honchos who invested a lot of time in this area when it didn't mean anything. But for the purposes of the primer talk today, Lex and I came up with this definition that we thought was a basic understanding of what does it mean to design for growth. And through our talk, hopefully you'll understand that it's not anything that's really different or a rocket science from core product design. So growth design is a practice that focuses on high impact. So I really want to focus on this word high impact because this is where it gets very uh, fuzzy for designers in terms of is my work measurable or is it not? I want to do this radio button versus the drop down because I, either I like it or because it's a cool thing to do. That's where the aptitude for a growth designer may not work. Uh, so it is a practice, a practice that focuses on high impact strategies and tactics. So it's a balance of both. And the way it's executed is by getting to know the customer, getting the customer, and most important, being able to retain or keep the customer. So with that, over to Lex.